have a Mayday video talking to you in months. Crazy, I know. So last year I did a video on my favourite art materials and I said I'd be doing it a lot more regularly and I, I did. I'm sorry. I completely blanked you guys. But I have acquired some new materials because I've been acquiring a lot of new skills um, coming to college and all so I thought I'd uh, do another one of these videos. Um, might include some extra stuff in there um, of things that I've been loving recently in the past couple of months and that I think you guys would love to know. So let's get started. <laughs> Alright, so first of all we're starting with my pencil case. Yes, it's the same one because this is my sacred pencil case. I could never let it go. I've had it for about seven years and it's still in perfect condition and it's still my best friend. Oh, this is something I'm really excited. Okay, so I got this so recently because I am very obsessed with um, two YouTubers here. I might make a video about um, YouTubers, art YouTubers that I like. Would you guys like to see it? Because I have a lot of them <laughs> that I watch. I think you guys, yeah, I might do. So I'm completely obsessed with Zero Bagnes and um, Mini Skim, Min, Mini Skim something. I, I don't really know her name. Mini Skim Milk, something like that. I'll leave her links, their links down there, but I'm completely obsessed with their videos. I've watched every single one of them. And one thing that they use a lot is these, um, it's ink, right? Black ink. But these are brush pens um, that are in uh, black and I legit immediately got one um, on Amazon and it was really cheap. Um, I got the cheapest one just to see if I adapted well to it but there's this other one that, um, again, Mini Skin Milk I recommended in one of her videos so I might get that one. Um, because it's refillable, but I also love this one if you want like a cheap option. This was like two or three pounds on Amazon and it's really good. Since I am kind of like um, now doing animation illustration, I have been very obsessed with fine liners. I know that there's this brand that's considered the best, but I actually prefer these. These are the ones that I buy at my uni uh, store. That's, and I get student discount. That's why I like them so much. No, I'm kidding, they're really good. Uh, they're the uni pin fine liners, and I've got the 0 0.8 and 0 0.5, and I've also got the 0 0.05, which is like really, really, really small. Everyone needs some good fine liners, you know what I mean? Um, I've been becoming recently very obsessed with fine liners. Like, I'm getting them in every shape and form and color. <laughs> it's kind of a small addiction that kind of grows. So so yeah, I've also got these two, which everyone knows from their childhood, like we all use these pens in, pri in primary school, but they are actually really good. I'm, I use them a lot for my sketches and my illustrations. They're really good and I do really recommend them if you just want some really fat black pens that don't bleed into the next page, which is something that I really really take into account about pens is that whether or not they bleed into the page. Um, which is why I'm not really a fan of Copic markers. Another thing that I've been loving is a red charcoal. Um, oh wait, no, that's chalk. <laughs> sorry guys, I know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry. So another thing that I've been loving a lot, I got this for Christmas from an aunt. You, you know, like when you're that kid that's got this specific skill in the family, so when your family members don't know what to give you, they just give you art materials. Shh. Yeah, that's me. So I got this red chalk pencil, uh, along with some actual charcoal um, in like sepia tones, but this chalk pencil I've been loving a lot because the color is not only beautiful, it's really pretty and I really like it. And I've been sketching a lot in this um, because I love monochromatic drawings, uh, as you might have noticed. So red chalk has been a good friend of mine. Ooh, 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 ooh. Another thing I'm really uh, obsessed, I got this also at my uni. Uh, store but you get this anywhere honestly and it's a basically just a white paint marker and I use this a lot in my um, drawings and sketches and stuff to add like um, the final details um, so like a little light speck in the eyes or like details on on the hair um, and it's really good they're really <sighs> difficult to work with you have to really you know cooperate it's a two-way street you know it's a relationship a bond you have to build with it but it, eventually it works and uh, it's really good and it's really practical for uh, realistic drawings and just even sketches and stuff so I really recommend this um, the, mine's from 
yeah, uni paint. I'll leave links for everything down there. So as I was saying, I've got a very distinct obsession with markers. But one thing that I take a lot into account into pens and markers is whether or not they bleed into the page. Um, so that's why I'm very much obsessed recently with the um, Windsor and Newton are like literally bay. Um, I'm not even kidding. They're basically um, in some aspects they're the expensive version of some things, but in another aspect they're the cheap version of Copic markers. Um, so these pigment markers from Windsor and Newton are literally beautiful. Uh, I've got the skin tone set, which I did mention in my last video, I remember, which are just beautiful. Like I use them a lot in uh, in my sketchbook and stuff at school. Um, and then for Christmas, my dad gave me the um, the set with like the bold colors or whatever. And the colors are just so beautiful. Like they're pigmented, they're beautiful, and they don't bleed as much into the page as Copic markers. If you're careful enough with them, they don't actually bleed. Depending on the paper as well, but they don't really bleed as much, which is really good. And I love them. Um, back with the conversation of fine liners. I have these other fine liners, which I got at Comic Con Portugal last year. They're actually in brown, and um, they're great for sepia drawings. And uh, this one is the number one that I've got in my pencil case all the time because it's the thickest one, but it's also got a fine tip, so pretty much just works for everything. But I did get the pack with all of the sizes. So, again, still loving my Pentel Aqua brush pens, still using them every day. Um, mentioned these in my last video. Again, I'll leave my, the link to my last video that I did a year ago uh, down there. Still using these every day, still amazing, still recommend. Let's not forget my beautiful tin from Faber Castle. Those are my babes, still with me, don't you worry. Still love them to death. Talking sketchbooks. Yeah, by the time you're seeing this video, uh, my video on my one week sketchbook has already come out. And the sketchbook that I use is um, is the, these Sea White from Brighton, Sea White of Brighton. And they're, they're the 140 grams one, and they're absolutely amazing and they're so cheap. They're quite small, so they're easy to fill up, which is something that I pretty much love in sketchbooks because it gives you so much motivation to uh, keep moving from sketchbook to sketchbook and eventually you can upgrade to bigger and thicker sketchbooks and that ATP or something each they're really cheap and this is at my university store but I'm pretty sure they're not a lot more expensive online or at any store highly recommend these because the pages are amazing like they're good for watercolors they're good for markers and they're good for pretty much anything and I'm just pretty much obsessed with these sketchbooks now. I've also still got this uh, sketchbook from Moleskine because I haven't really been working in it much. Again, I think I, meant, I might have mentioned this in my last video. No, I didn't because it was before the summer. So I got this new sketchbook that my dad also gave me and it's from Moleskine and I know Moleskine sketchbooks are a little bit expensive but that's because they're amazing. They're the best. So my dad gave me this one and it's kind of a different sketchbook that I'm used to. It's the ones that flip up and not to the sides. That's, um, and also I love most of sketchbooks because they always come with a little pouch at the back. Ugh. They always come with a little pouch at the back that you can like put your stuff in, which I really like. Ooh. So as I said previously, I'm doing animation at uni and so I got this new Wacom pad. I used to have a different Wacom pad, which was from Bamboo, which was pretty tiny and it's basically the most the cheapest one you can get which is the one I got a couple years ago just to like start trying out digital drawing and stuff but I need an upgrade because you know so I needed a bigger better more professional one so I got this one from Wacom and literally I would not advise anything much bigger than this maybe the size above but anything bigger than that I just there's no point to it because you never actually use the entire surface of drawing on uh, digitally or making animations or anything but I absolutely love this it's my new, literally my new baby the stylus is beautiful um, and it's got little buttons on it and then it's got these little shortcut buttons on it I, I think it was about 50 pounds on Amazon and I got it for Christmas for myself and it's really good and it's a good price and it's um, an investment for life. 
I have a thing with sketch pads. Uh, I always have a problem with finding affordable sketch pads where I can just do any drawings on because I hate having sketch pads for like every single different medium. Um, but I've got, I got this one, how much was it? This was like 11 euros, so about like nine pounds or something. And it's a mixed media uh, sketch pad and it's literally like watercolor and it's cheaper than the watercolor one, but it also works for like, it works for um, pigment markers, it works for acrylic. It's basically where I did all my drawings for um, Inktober. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, ink works beautifully on this and it's got a great texture and I'm just very obsessed with it. So if you want a good um, sketch pad for your intense works and like experimentations with oils and stuff, go for this. And now we're getting to my favorite part, which is my baby, my Canon AE1. Um, I have been completely obsessed with this film camera, and I've got the Canon AE1, um, and it's absolutely beautiful. Oh wait, let me just show her all of her to you. <laughs> if you like photography, uh, if you like taking pictures, and if you like pretty pictures, I highly recommend you to get one of these. I got this one on eBay for legitimately £65 or £70, I think, which is a great price because when I went into stores to try and find it, it was like £300, £400, and I was like, Ugh, okay, <laughs> nope. So on eBay, they always have these uh, on eBay because they're vintage or whatever, and they always have them at great prices. And the film isn't very expensive. I know people say like, oh, it's just coming back into fashion or something, that's why everyone's got it. It actually isn't, it's just that it, it gives such a different uh, look to pictures that you can't really get with digital cameras anymore. And it's just, I really love uh, having physical um, pictures with me because uh, as you can see like I decorate my walls with pictures and stuff like that and I'm not really a fan of Polaroids to be honest I don't really like the white borders I just like the pictures you can then just put them in a little photo album see I've got this photo album since uh, October yeah since October of 2016 like they just give such ah, I just love it so much I'll probably make a video about um, this camera specifically but um yeah i think i might make a video on that so uh yeah i really recommend you getting one if you like pictures so yeah i'm gonna leave it at that um on that note we're ending this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and yeah i'll see you guys in my next video bye